Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's One Piece Treasure Cruise video we have a reaction and I will give you my thoughts on the most recent news about the new version 13.0 in One Piece Treasure Cruise. As you can see we are in the official One Piece Treasure Cruise Discord, shout out to Godot for all of the information we are about to see. And first things first, the maintenance will happen in approximately a week, probably after the upcoming Kizuna with Bartolomeo and Cavendish concludes and it will last for around 10 hours. What will the new version introduce though? Let's take a look. The quick details are that we are getting a new game mode, Pirate King Adventures, it's called, new features for characters, ship levels have now been increased to 11 and 12 for certain ships, the shipyard UI will be reworked and we will also get other minor fixes like every update. The big introduction of course, the new game mode. Pirate King Adventures, in this mode you can team up with the Straw Hat Pirates and other allies to defeat scaling bosses, so essentially it will be your team or your characters versus enemies. Of course you will be able to get rewards from the mode like from every other mode. We can get a glimpse of the upcoming mode in this image where we see our characters, the Straw Hats, in some specific hexes and then we see the boss encounters in purple hexes, here we see Roger for example. And it seems like this is treasure map reworked, to me at least, because it says adventure to the furthest side of the map and defeat the boss, so essentially you start from one spot at the one end of the map, targeting to go to the other spot at the other side of the map, which to me indicates treasure map. It also has chests and enemies or maybe other rewards on the map while you are heading towards the main boss of that map. I don't know if I am the only one thinking this, but this seems awfully similar to treasure map in a different setting. Now, of course, I don't think the mode will be like treasure map because I am not certain if the classic quest playthrough of One Piece Treasure Cruise will be implemented in this mode. I think this will be a very different mode than the usual One Piece Treasure Cruise gameplay, just like Pirate Rumble was when it was introduced back in the day. In the next image, we see favorites and events. Deliver favorites to the respective Straw Hat Pirates for various events. Now I'm not really certain what this is, I'm guessing favorites are items that the Straw Hats or your characters really like, for example for Luffy, meat, and then you probably either increase their stats, they get some perks or they activate specials, I'm not certain, and I don't really understand how events work, we don't really know the full information on the mode, it's just a tease essentially. I am expecting more info to come out, but for events maybe you can gain specific items for specific characters. In the next image we see Iras Sugo Specialist here, I don't know if this one is for the normal One Piece Treasure Cruise quests or the new mode, but it doesn't seem like the new mode, at least the presentation here. Ras Sugo Special meets certain requirements during the quest to activate it. So you hit a perfect and then you get two Rases and one finish. By spending HP you can deal more attacks. If you miss a tap the Ras ends and you need a chain of four consecutive attacks it seems like, starting with a perfect. Chain the tap combo to unleash amazing flares of attacks. So this is 100% for the normal One Piece Treasure Cruise quests and gameplay, not the new mode. I am guessing that's what they meant by new features for characters. Just like the super type was introduced, now we get Ras specials that will of course be available for specific characters, most likely the new anniversary legends will also have it available. If the Ras is available, you start probably the chain with one of the other characters in your crew, ending it with the Ras special character and if you of course met all of the requirements it will activate doing more damage, therefore adding yet another way for more damage. And I have to say this seems interesting but I want to see how exactly it will work. I get the main mechanics here during the quest from the presentation, but 
Will this one be a limit break ability just like the super tandem and final dub abilities where you also need to upgrade it for its character because with the super tandem abilities the reason I am personally not a big fan of them is that if you are free to play and have majority of them at level 1 they are not that useful. So if this is another pay to win mechanic for new Super Sugofest exclusive characters it's not an amazing thing. It's cool I guess to have more diversity into Legends, but if it is another limited thing for limited Legends, I can't say I'm the biggest fan. We definitely need more information. Moving on to the Shipyard update, it gains new features, now specific ships will be able to be upgraded to level 11 and level 12. We get Super Cola, which is required for upgrading a ship to level 11 and above and can be obtained from the Pirate King Adventures mode. Okay, so Super Cola will be a specific reward from the new game mode. Interesting. Ship modification also seems to be a thing now. We can raise a ship's grade to level 12 in order to modify them. So after we use Super Cola, now we have access to ship modification and we can use normal cola, super cola or belly to modify the ship. We can give it more HP attack and RCV. So just like the new mode map, seems like the treasure map map, this update here and the ship modification seems exactly like the cotton candy system just for ships. I don't think there is any way with the modification or even... Actually with the upgrade maybe, but with the modification I don't think the multiplier for attack boosting or HP boosting from the base ability of current ships will be increased. Maybe it will with the extra upgrade, but with the modification I only think we will be getting a base number of plus HP attack and RCV for our characters, and not even all of them, it will probably depend on the ship ability. So for example, if it is for specific classes or colors, these will be the characters getting the extra stats. There is also a modification rank, 5 ranks to be exact. So higher the rank, the stronger the stat boost effect. Okay, so the higher the rank of the modification, then the higher the stat ceiling can be for your characters. I am guessing these stats are for your characters, it doesn't really make sense to only be for your ship anyway. And we have the base ranks at first, and then we see Choppers, Usaps, and Frankies symbol for the maximum 5 star rank. In the next image, we also see a modification special effect. So, if all three of the stats are 4 star rank or better, so the rank is for each individual stat, it's not for all of them together. Um, or for the ship specifically, it is for each stat, so you upgrade them separately, just like the cotton candy, RCV attack and HP cotton candy are all separate. Then if all of them are 4 star rank or better, the special effect is activated. Now what is the special effect, we have no idea, it says minus 1 cooldown there, so maybe the special ability the ship already has or gains from the level 12 upgrade gets a special cooldown reduction. Maybe that's the case. It also states meet the rank set requirement to activate the ship's special effect. The special effect varies by ship. So it's definitely the special ability of each ship. Keep modifying the same ship. If you continue to modify the same ship, the modification bonus goes will fill. When the ghost is filled, the next modification will guarantee to have at least one 4 star rank or better modification. Keep filling the ghost to get better guaranteed modification bonus. Okay, so you keep modifying the ship, it is easier for you to max out the stats. Okay, the shipyard changes definitely seem interesting. It says ships can be upgraded multiple times at once as well, that definitely makes sense a quality of life upgrade right here, so you don't need to manually upgrade each level of the ship, you can do multiple of them at once, I am guessing that's what it means. At first I thought this is the cotton candy thing for ships, so it's not amazing, and while I still think the stat thing is not the best, we still have something to do with our cola now, 
to upgrade ships, cola becomes more valuable, super cola is introduced, the new game mode has a specific purpose and a specific reward as well. But above all that, the ship special is also very nice because I am guessing ships that currently do not have a special will probably gain one with upgrades to level 11 and 12. So that is definitely interesting because it can make ships that are irrelevant or never used more um, useful and definitely give more diversity to ship usage. Hopefully more ships will now be introduced as well, but I definitely don't think that will be the case for now. Maybe we'll get a new ship for the anniversary, but with all of the ships kind of reworked or upgraded, I don't think we are going to see a lot of new ships. And obviously not all of the ships can be upgraded early on, but I'm guessing progressively majority of them will. We see some other details here as well. The new mode will be unlocked at any level, that's cool. There are no rankings associated with the game mode, that is very good. The new mode will run on a stamina system, of course it will. You will recover only one adventure stamina per day. However, you can refill that stamina with the standard stamina mids. Nice. And the number of times you can refill is limited per day. And I am guessing if you want to use gems to probably do refills, they are not going to stop you. About ships, the details about the ships that will have level 11 and beyond will be added at a later date, yeah, obviously. And then we can see the key takeaways from the upcoming version news. So I will leave these on screen for you guys to read, but I want to give you my closing thoughts on all of the news so far. First of all, let me emphasize we need more information to judge properly. We barely know what will happen in the new game mode. But what I want to say is this. These updates might be cool, but there is a glaring issue here in my opinion. Once again, they have done a completely new stamina limited mode, just like with Pirate Rumble, and they have ignored the main gameplay of One Piece Treasure Cruise. Or maybe because we don't have enough information, I have completely misjudged the new game mode, and actually the way you progress and defeat bosses is by actually playing quests against these bosses in the traditional One Piece Treasure Cruise gameplay, but you are getting different perks, different boosts, different stuff from the map and the hexes and the straw hats you have acquired to be your pawns or something like that. And favorites, the item system, maybe if you get meat for Luffy, that means RCV slots have a higher chance of appearing. If maybe you get a sword for Zoro, that means for the next boss battle, your slasher characters you can use in your crew have double their stats or maybe lower special cooldown or something like that. Maybe it is an interactive map mode with actual quests based on the main gameplay of One Piece Treasure Cruise, but so far it kinda seems like to me it is like a mini game mode different from the main core gameplay. That doesn't mean the new mode will be horrible, but Raids are not coming back, arenas are not coming back, and this new mode does not provide more content based on the main One Piece Treasure Cruise game. It looks like another stamina limited mode in a stamina limited game. And then with the ship upgrades, the same thing seems to apply like with a lot of new characters. It's definitely cool to have it, but at the same time, there is not a lot of content to use it on. I definitely at least wanted something to be mentioned about the point event changes because they have said they don't like the point events, they want them changed, but almost halfway through the year and nothing has been mentioned. But again, maybe it is too early to judge. Let's wait for more information. Definitely let me know of your thoughts in the comments down below though and vote in my voting poll. Do you think the new mode will be revolved around the main core gameplay of OPTC or do you think it will be something completely different like Pirate Rumble? Are you excited for the new version or it doesn't really seem that interesting to you? Tell me in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the discussion, definitely leave a like, I would really appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.